What is Gucci, everybody? Uh, it's AJ, and this is a new video. And the problem isn't that I was using iOS 8 in the last video, but now I'm using iOS 9 and Swift version 2.0 from this video and all future videos. If you haven't updated it to yet, I encourage you to. It may take a little while, but it's worth it to have iOS 9 and Swift 2. In this video, we're going to go over some new keywords. I know, AJ, I know what you're thinking. You know, some new keywords, it's it's not nice to learn those. I agree with that, and we're going to learn a lot along the way. Today, we're going to learn about the guard keyword. The guard keyword can be a little bit confusing, so let's dive right in. I'm going to start by creating a function and guard, guard example. And it's going to take an integer named x, and I'm going to make it an optional. Okay, It's not going to return anything right now. It's just going to print something. Now, that integer, we want to check if they passed in an integer as x. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the guard statement. Now, in prior versions of Swift, we would use the if let statement to check if the variable was what it was talking about. And, but now... We can use the guard statement. And what the guard statement allows us to do is it allows us to check certain conditions before we continue down our function. And I'll show you guys here. It's very similar to the if let statement, but we're going to, but I'm going to show you guys where it differs. So I'm going to do guard let num equals x. So if x is not nil, it's going to be signed num throughout the entire function, not just within the parentheses, as you'll see. And then I'm also going to make a where clause. So my where clause is going to be my Boolean conditional clause that specifies what conditions I want this variable x to be under for it to continue. So I'm going to say where x is greater than 100. And actually, I'll say where num is greater than 100 else. Else is also another keyword you want to add. So there's a lot of keywords in this situation you want to add. And I also have to add a return statement to get all my errors going away. Okay, so let me explain some things. I've got my guard let num equals x. So if x is not nil, if it's actually an int, then num, the, low, the um, constant num will be created and be able to use throughout this function, even outside of the braces. Where is when I specify my Boolean condition. So I can specify my condition that I want this variable to be at or what state I want my program to be at if I want to continue down here. So if this con if this condition is met, then this then nothing within these braces will be executed as you'll see. And then you that's why you do the else. So the else is basically specifying that otherwise if this condition is not met, all this code must be executed. And the reason because I have the return statement is because a guard statement must relinquish power. It must back out out of its block. So now we're in this else block right here. It must back out of its block. So it either must return from the function, if it's in a function, or if it's in a loop, it either can use break or continue. That's something very important to memorize. So I'm going to print here. Something also new in Swift is just use print, not print ln, print um, out of function. Or, you know, x, x is less than 100. And boom. Okay, so now to do we're also going to print, we're just going to print x is greater than 100. And boom, we're going to be done there. And I won't put a return statement right there. So now we're going to see if we're going to get any errors. And I don't believe any, I have any errors. So now let's call the function and just show you guys exactly what I mean. So we're going to call it, we're going to call it with 100. And what is going to happen here? I need to call it again because sometimes... The playground doesn't play nice. I'm going to call it with 99. We'll call it with a uh, 1 just to show you guys. Okay. And now hopefully after some code it gets run, it should display in this terminal right here. Okay. Good. So now we've got... It's, well, now we have something saying that it's printed out right here. Two times it's printed out in the guard statement. And that is because the num greater than 100 condition is not met. So to actually make a better example, I'm going to change this to 101. Anything above 100 would work. And hopefully after it reloads, sorry, it's taking long. My battery's on 4%. Okay, so now in our output, we have both conditions printing out here. 
and the reason because we have both conditions printing out is because line 18 now satisfies our our guard statement. So it's gonna this, this this guard is essentially guarding our conditions. So it's guarding the fact that x is not nil and that num is greater than 100. If it's not, it's going to go into this block and deal with it. So the guard statement is guarding against your conditions. It's all the conditions you want to be met before you, you continue in your program. Okay? Un, uh, this is unlike your if let statement where it's all the conditions that you actually know it's the same thing. It's the conditions you want to be met as well into your program. Sorry, guys. It's, it's late here. I'm just trying to think. Okay, so we've got X is so as you can see if I ever run it with a number less than 100 Then my the my further programming will not continue and otherwise It won't so things to remember here. You can Make this num variable. Oh, yeah, I guess I should show you guys that that num variable I created what, even though I substantiate inside the the um, guard statement in the if let's situation, it would only be able to use within those parentheses, but now the guard, now it's, it's printing out um, x is greater than 100, and then I get x is greater than 100, and it's 101. So what's happening there is that this variable, this constant setting, num equal x, is, avail is available to the whole scope the guard is in. So the whole scope is wherever the guard statement is for the whole function. So if it's in a function, it would be available through everything, or if it's in a class, it'd be available throughout the whole class. If you have it at the class scope, so that's pretty cool, or even the global scope. So remember that. So now that num variable is that num variable is without is inside is is in that scope. So it's can be used anywhere in my function as I print out at the very end right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have the best day of your lives, and stay Gucci.